Today a man decides to make a simple project, an easy project, that should probably take him a day, maybe two to finish. But what he doesn't know is that we replaced the door to his workshop with a new door. A door that leads... This is a quarter inch piece of maple plywood, I think. Go ahead and focus the laser to it. Let's head over to the laptop. Very simple design. We've got Rebel Alliance logo. I want to make sure that it's 10 inches in height and that puts it a little under 10 inches in width. And then this is just a hole that's three-eighths of an inch. And then the only other thing I want is a circle behind it. And these are all set to cut. 60% power and five for the speed. But I'm not going to cut the outer circle right now. So I just go ahead and turn that off. Let's do it. Let's see if we did, these, did this right. And I think this should be enough for both parts. Oh, dang it. I can't believe I did that. <sighs> if you don't press the framing button back on the software and then instead just press this button over here, it'll just start cutting the last thing that was sent to it, which was um, earrings, maybe? Yeah, that's fine. So now I got a little cut right here. Now we're ready for framing. Now I've pressed the right buttons back on the software and we're ready for framing. So. Let's try. That's too far. It's too far. Okay. This piece of wood is actually a little bit bigger than what comfortably fits in here. Let's see. Should be able to get a 10 inch circle and an 11 inch circle out of this one piece of wood. Oh, and we hit a limiter. Yeah, I've got this thing. Okay, I hear you. Okay, so this device has limit switches so that when it tries to go too far this direction or too far this direction, an alarm sounds. And um, it's not a happy sounding alarm. So that's not gonna work. Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna cut this down a little bit. Switching back and forth, I was wearing laser goggles and then everything was like red. I was like, I can't see what I'm doing. So you gotta change out the laser goggles for safety goggles. There we go. Now, that's a piece of wood that actually fits in here properly, and we shouldn't have any more horrible beeping noises. I appreciate the safety feature, but I'm not a big fan of that screeching. All right, let's see how it does. This is the cut area, which is, yep, that's good, that looks good. All right, and we're gonna send the job to the laser over on the laptop. Oops, I've gotta take off the safety goggles, put on the laser goggles, here we go. The fan in here is still going, so it vents all of the smoke and stuff outside, which is really nice. I usually let it vent for uh, 20 minutes or so afterwards. That looks pretty cool. But we're not just doing a laser cut clock. I think I got a cool idea. Uh, okay. That looks crazy. No, it's a perfectly normal hand. Not a robot killing arm. Perfectly normal hand. I ordered a refill on conductive paint and this is the one I'm used to getting. Um, but they also sent me out a new one to try, which is a water-based conductive paint. You basically just need to stir it up well before you use it. What happens is you get these sort of lumps of sediment down at the bottom and they just need to be stirred up. And then once all that's stirred up, it'll stay suspended in the material. Uh, and since we want to electroform a wooden surface. This whole thing needs to be covered with conductive paint. 
and I also want to make sure that I get the edges too. It's better to do two or three light coats of this than uh, one heavy coat. The coats of paint dry really fast, but it takes a full 24 hours to be cured enough to go into the solution. Only one side of this is going to be visible once it's assembled, but I am a little worried about what would happen if I just let the wood sit in there for eight hours, if it would just absorb that solution. The step that I haven't worked out yet is how am I going to submerge a 10 inch item in my setup? We've got 24 hours to figure that out. We've got three coats of paint on here and it looks nice and dry. How am I going to fit that in here? And obviously I'm not. Quick run to Target and we found this. Looks like it's going to work. It brings up another question, which is how do we keep this object from floating? We want it completely submerged. I just don't know how to do weights on it so that it'll be even. The only part that I don't care if it gets copper plated is the inside of that hole. So I've got a piece of wood with a dowel glued into it. I put some neodymium magnets on the bottom. Sticks great to the table saw. Piece of plastic is curved. <laughs> it's got a lip on it. <laughs> and uh, the magnets can't overcome that. Here's a little piece of steel. It holds okay through the plastic. Or I could just put the whole thing in here, right? But if I do that, a lot of the copper that I'm intending to put on here will flow to the steel. We'll use this system with this metal weight, obviously cut down a little shorter, and I will go ahead and spray paint this so that it doesn't become, so it doesn't use up all of our copper. Okay, that was easier in my head than it was in real life. This goes in. While I was sitting here waiting for the spray paint to dry is when I remembered that I have this incredibly strong magnet. I want to make sure that this doesn't jump anywhere. That's going to work just fine. So far, this whole project feels like one troubleshooting issue after another. All right, so now, electroforming solution. I have a larger bottle of it here because I think it's going to take more than our normal amount. Working. It's working. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Um, this is my power supply that came with my kit. This is a micro power supply, so it only goes up to one amp. The red one goes to this side, and then the black one goes to that side. I usually run this pretty low, like 0.2, but i um, got a big old piece in there, so we're going to turn it all the way up, and that's what we'll do. How long will this take? I haven't got any idea. I've never done anything this size. Definitely starting to work. All that bright area there is copper that is forming. We do have a lot to go. So now it's just a matter of waiting. And this is the only section left. I don't know what the underside looks like, but the top side looks pretty good. We can leave it just like this if we wanted to. All right, and here's the back. Uh, looks like there's a couple little spots here, probably air bubbles. So keeping it bright copper would totally be fitting with the logo. It's a little pinkish right now, but if we let it patina a bit, it'll darken and it might get some cool age to it. So while I was waiting for it, I went ahead and made a second one. 
And there's a good reason for that. At the end of the last video, I mentioned, like, I would be super happy if these went full Statue of Liberty. And a lot of you commented that that was actually pretty easy to achieve. So I read through the comments, and a lot of people said that to get the green, you use a mixture of vinegar and sea salt. And some people had other ingredients, but these are the two that I saw repeated over and over in the chat. So I just poured in like three ounces of vinegar and then, I don't know, a teaspoon and a half maybe? So that it looks like it's all dissolved and I'm just, I guess we'll just pour it. Yeah, I mean, what do we care? What, am I saving this for something? I'm not. Just pour it on there, Peter. Stop being so weird about it. That's the whole, something just fell off my camera. That's fine. That's the whole procedure. So now we just wait. That was eight o'clock last night. Here we are a little less than 12 hours later, 7 a.m. It looks amazing. We have some bright copper still showing through, some dark patina, but then we've got, look at that. Definitely got some too. A very different look over here. I really like this as well, but I really, I really like this side. So the other one's got this kind of spotting on one side, which looks pretty cool. They're both definitely aging. So what I want to do now is put a coat of spray lacquer on both of these, seal them in, and keep this look. This is what was in my head. Rebel Alliance logo, cut out of wood, copper plated, allowed to patina with a black wood background. I think it looks great. And because it's actual copper, it actually gets age. And I got these really interesting streaks. I'm not even sure where they came from. But even though this was the original concept, <laughs> I, I think I've fallen in love with the green one. It just looks, it looks so good. Yeah, you know, I'd gone online and I'd looked up all these different patinas and there's like all these chemicals that you can do to get this look that we got with vinegar and sea salt. I wanted to stop it at a point where there was still copper, patina of the copper, as well as the really bright blues and greens. So it had all of them. And if you wanted to, you could just let it keep going. There was actually a lot of troubleshooting on this project. I kind of like troubleshooting. It's, sometimes everything goes to plan and sometimes it's just a bit of a process. So which one are you? Are you on Team Red? Uh, more classic Rebel Alliance logo. Or are you on Team Green? I don't know. I will put links down in the description for both the laser and for the copper. Thank you guys very much for watching. 